Hi, I'm Larry and welcome to my techniques and tips here today. Uh, this is going to be a pastel and what I'm going to focus on is how to do birds. Uh, birds are basically this the same. They have a little bit different feathers and stuff, but the, the basics of them are, are pretty much the same. I want to explain to you what I have here. This I have um, mounted some just watercolor paper, a 140 pound uh, watercolor paper onto a piece of foam core. And then I had intended on putting the um, ground for pastel, and let me get this here. This is ground for pastel. This is made by, by Goldens, and it is, it's a paste, and it's got grit in it. And I usually um, thin it down to about one to one to put it on, and then I can create any kind of paper uh, this is, you know, gives me a nice sanded surface, but uh, what I did first was I put my, my drawing on my board first and then realized I hadn't put the ground on, so I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a watercolor wash. So what you see here is a watercolor wash that I did. Um, and then, then after the watercolor had dried, then I put the ground for pastel on. And it does come off, the watercolor does come off as you paint across. Uh, watercolor will stay activatable forever. Uh, you can take something that you've had in the closet for 30 years and think, I want to put some pastel on that. And as soon as you put this, you know, something wet on it, it's going to lift off. So just be aware of that. Paint carefully and most of it will stay on. So this is now dry. And this is what I'm going to be uh, doing to show you how to create shape and form with, with your pastels. This is just an underpainting. Um, you don't have to do it. I, I I do do some uh, underpainting at times. You can do either watercolor or you can do an alcohol wash. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, th there's a lot of options that you have and I do have a, a techniques and tips on doing either a, a water wash or an alcohol wash if you want to look that up. So the first thing I did was I found a reference photo and this is this will be on my um, my site my blog site will have the link to this photograph and I'm just going to concentrate on the bird I'm not going to concentrate on any water background nothing this is just for the bird because I want to I want you to see and this is what I like about the, these uh, Canadian geese is that their feathers have patterns to show you how they follow the shape of of the bird and that's the biggest problem I find with um, beginners is that they they just kind of paint them all either straight back or straight down and it doesn't it makes the bird look really funny so you have to follow the shape and this this goes for fur as well one of these days I'll I'll do one on fur. But you, you have to follow the shape of the bird and the shape of the feathers. So this is my reference material and I made a drawing from that and I, I put that drawing in my, my uh, computer and I came up with this design and I have a program. You'll also find uh, links to a couple of different programs of, uh, poster A and Razor Poster, but I'm sure there's more of out there than those that will let you take your your smaller drawing. It was just a one sheet of paper, but it will blow it up to as big as you need. I could make this as big as the wall if I wanted to. Um, so it's it's just individual sheets of paper. Then on the back, I went over over the lines with a a soft pastel and then I 
and lined it onto my paper, went over it. I just used the back of a, of a, this is a color shaper, but you can use the back of a uh, brush or go over it with a pencil or something and just, just trace it on. That's how I get my design on. So now, you know, I, w I want to start. And the one thing I, I, I have also done before I, I get started was I went and I, I selected out, I don't need that one this time, is I selected out colors that you know, I kind of compared them to my, my photograph here. And I got as close to the colors that I see in the photograph with my um, colors that I'm going to be using. And I set them aside. It, I found that it saves a lot of time trying to, to find them in my vast array of, of pastels over here. So I'm, I just um, have a separate little box that I put them in to work with. Um, and it, it just, just saves me some time. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't go back in and search for, for pastels. You know, if, if something's not working out, I will go back in and, and search and find the color that, that works better for me. But what I want to do is I want to start with, with the underpainting. Everything is underpainting. This is underpainting. The first layers that I'm going to put on are underpainting. And um, then, then we'll... we'll start working on detail. But this is just a, a color. And, I, I, and as I'm going, I'm going to follow around the, the bird. You, all of your strokes mean something. And I have the, the photograph right down there where I can see it. But notice how as I go around this bird, my, the direction of my chalk marks changes. Now, one thing about pastels, and you'll hear me say this a lot if you watch these videos, it's sort of the mantra of pastelists everywhere is that you never have the right color. Just never. So you, you're going to have to learn to, to blend. I'm going to bring this down a little bit here. Then I want to switch to a little bit darker color because I'm now going in under the under the bird. Try to keep my head out of this. But see, as I, as I come in here, I, I'm, I've, I'm flattening this because this is now going under the bird, coming up his side, his or her, I don't know which one this is, and a little bit darker back here. Got that other color, going to come in. Add some. This is called chalk blending, where you you take and blend the two areas with another, with the you know one of the other colors or even a third color. I will do some blending with my fingers here, and I even want to throw a little bit of. Okay, this is kind of a, a soft. Um, indigo color and I just want to throw that in here too. Now I'll do some some more of this off camera so I'm not wasting all of my time painting or, or doing this and I'm just going to come in with my fingers. Same thing, I'm going to follow this around with my fingers in this same direction as I see those feathers grow. Everything is important. All of your strokes are important. The way, way you blend is important. So I'm going to 
take a little break here and finish uh, putting on the put this on this is a little bit lighter spot on his chest same thing follow the and like I said this is just under painting I will come back lighten it add detail as we go but this is just this is just the beginnings so give me a half second and I will be right back all right, now I've got all of his chest in, his, in the front part of his belly done. I haven't done anything back here or to the top of the wings. And I want to get to those first. Now, I'm, I'm not doing detail right now. I may suggest where I see some, some detail where it would start. Um, this is just a really dark brown. And I'm, again, my my reference photo is right down where I can look at it so I'm looking at it constantly even while I'm talking but but notice that there's a curve here there's a curve like that I'm that's what I'm trying to to get right now this is just underpainting detail comes later these are a little bit darker here. Another layer of darker feathers here. Now I encourage everyone, if you've never done an animal or you've never done a, a bird or a dog or whatever, don't just jump in and think you're gonna do your masterpiece. Y you need to have a little bit of understanding about what's going on. So take, take the time to come in and just do, do a small study. You don't need to do a big one. I'm doing a big one like this, um, which is uh, 11 by uh, 14, because I find it's easier for me to film. But if I were going to do this, I, I might draw it first, just to, to get the, the um, you know, understand the values, the shapes, the directions. There's a lot, lot of information you can get just by by drawing something. Um, but I, I encourage you to to take the time. Uh, watch artists. You know, when they paint, if they're if they're really trying to give you some some information or talk to them, ask them their process. You know, if you go to a local um, art show where there's local artists out, you know, talk to them, find out, you know, what do you do to create this? Do you just start? I mean, how, how do you come up with this? And listen to them. They're going to tell you a lot of, like what I've just said. Now I've got that dark, now I've got a, a, a kind of a medium color. But the, you know, I, I've seen, everybody has a different way of, of working, of course, but most of the, the professional artists that I've seen, they will take a lot of photographs, they'll do a lot of studies, they will you know, just take and do some thumbnails, which are just little sketches, trying to place things, which is, you know, a lot of what I do when I'm working on my own um, pictures and, and paintings. Just going to come in here. This is a little bit darker. But it's not just we jump in and, and start start working. There's there's a whole a whole process that goes on. And you need to to understand that and 
and figure out what's going to work for you. I, I've had students come in that they, they do these beautiful studies, uh, go out and find a leaf and, and just try to, to recreate that leaf either in watercolor, pastel, or acrylics. Okay, I'm going to pick up... Now, pastel is about the only place I actually use black because um, it's not as problematic as it is in other mediums. So, but I don't usually use it alone. Come in here. This is shadow under the, the far wing. And I'm going to take, this is that same dark blue color that I had. I'm going to add the dark blue. Gives it a little more, doesn't make it look as harsh. Black can look really unnatural, especially in shadows. Shadows are, tend to be on the blue or the purpley side. Right now I'm going to come in, I'm going to start blending. Wait, uh, now I've, I've got a, a wet paper, it's not a wet paper towel, just a wet washcloth over here that I can kind of wipe my fingers off on and dry them off on my my smock here. But then I'm just going to come in and, and just, just blend these. doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this is, this is just underpainting. This is just where we start. Everything needs to have a place where it starts. And one of the things I do like about pastels is that, at least for me, it tends to be a little bit quicker than, than like my watercolor or acrylics. I don't know what that, why, but it just is. You know, it's fun. You know, everybody will ask me, you know, which is your favorite? And that's sort of like asking me to choose between my kids which I don't have, but I do have pets, and they're kind of my kids. Now, this underpainting becomes texture. It becomes shadows. You know, it's, it's important. This is like our foundation. Now, one of the things I do want to remind you, if you are in a classroom situation and you, you've got, a, like you can see that there's a lot of, of dust coming off of this, don't blow it in class because this is very fine microparticles and if somebody, even yourself, has a, a breathing problem, it can cause some, some real serious problems. So take it outside and, and blow it off uh, uh, out there. But, but don't blow it off in the, in the classroom. So I'm going to take another little break and look at and see what I need to do here. And then I'll come back and, and finish filling in the, the head and, and the underbody here. I, I just need to get some of that, that loose dust off. So I'll be right back. All right, now I've got the, the loose dust off. I took it outside, blew it off. Now, if you have um, respiratory problems, you can still do pastels, but I do advise you to wear a mask. We're getting used to it as right now anyway, but it, it will keep you from having some problems. I have many students that have to wear a mask, but they love pastels so much. Um, so again, now, now, now I'm gonna work on, on the neck, and it's a little hard to see in this photograph because it's a black, a black neck. So I'm, I'm gonna use black. And like I said, I, I do use black in um, pastel. Under here, I'm just gonna kind of go around that white spot. But again, I'm still going to follow the shape of the neck with my, my strokes. This part here is 
not quite as light as maybe other places are. Come around here. Under his, you know, sometimes you have to work your chalk around to find a an edge. Now I'm I'm my eyes are going back and forth to my my photograph here, following the shape of his head in the way the feathers fall on it. Beak is going to be a little bit different. There's some dark right in there. Dark right here. Now I took this photograph. We have a, even though we're in the middle of the city, there's a, a little bit of a marsh left over from before all the houses got here, and they've turned it to a, a reserve. And the Canadian geese come in here. And they go, you know, I don't really feel like flying all the way to Canada. And so they stop there and they'll raise their families. And certain times of year you'll see the little goslings out there. And the geese are pretty friendly. So you can get some fairly decent pictures of them. Now I'm going to switch to, this is, this may be a little hard to see. This is like a dark charcoal. I'm going to go over some of that. Again, I'm blending with that that charcoal I'm not going to do the eyes right now I'm going to kind of leave the eyes alone probably needs a little different I'm picking up a different this is a lighter gray as you can see there that's a little better because there's a little bit of a, a rise from the feathers right there on his head. A little bit in here. Now I'm going to take that, that blue that he had, that dark blue, and come in. Highlights on black are usually either real white because it's shiny, but most of the time they tend to be on, on the blue side just looking here and I think that's good. I'm going to take let's see. I'm going to take a different this is a kind of a in between gray and come up here and, and do his beak. No, nope, that's not as light as I thought it was. Like I said, you never have the right color. So I'll go back to this this gray. And just base that in. Now it may look a little rough right now, but I always tell my students that there's a, a stage that I call the terminal uglies. Let me find a light gray here. I'm going back into my the other batch of colors that I have. But that terminal ugly stage is your underpainting. And you think, oh my God, what am I thinking? I can't, just nothing's going to happen here. But, um, you know, if you keep working at it, you will. You know, it'll start to, to show up. This is just the tail back here. I want to just 
get this this tail in I forgot to put in I also forgot part of a, a wing right there so I'll just put that in now I want to come back in before I do that part I want to blend I may do that in the next segment uh, that little white spot but as you work on your on your painting and this is called a painting the pastel painting you're going to see it start to take shape even with just the, the blending I'm going to switch to one of my color shapers color shaper is just this this is like a soft rubber tip and it's like having little tiny itty bitty fingers and my fingers are small but they're not as small as I I need them right now so I'm just going to come in this is one of those things that you'd look at the you're in the store and you go oh that looks like it's a could be handy for something and you buy it and you don't know what you're going to do with it I, well at least I do that and color shapers were one of those I bought some because they looked interesting and it wasn't until I was struggling with a pastel that had some detail work to it that I thought I need some little tiny fingers and I went, oh I wonder if those color shapers would work and sure enough they do so that's that's why I use them I'm gonna come here and just smooth that out throw a little bit of that that blue in because again this is in shadow tail goes on off I didn't think we need to need it to have that in there for this all right I'm going to take another little break because I want to get the chalk dust off so I can work on on the the little white spot and then I will be right back all right now I've, I've blown off all of the the dust I wanted to and, I, and I've cleaned my hands because I want to work in this area that's going to be white now if you can see here there's a couple little places where I I got over on my black now you can find these things at um, the drugstore is where I got these this is this is just a, a e eraser that's in a pen like structure and you can use that uh, these as long as it's white you can just erase this and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to go over over that and if you if you need to you know I've got a little little brush here that I can kind of dust dust it off if you've got bigger areas like up here now I would not be worrying about this myself I would just come over with with other colors but if it's a problem for you you can just take a, a bigger a white eraser not not the pink ones the pink ones can leave pink they've got a colorant in them okay so so you know just use that dust off the can even use this to, to dust off off chalk too but um, get it to where where you like it if you have a, a razor blade or an exacto knife or something you can take and shape the the um, eraser into a nice edge get get you into some smaller areas um, okay so now what I want to do and it looks like I just messed this up even worse than it was so here I'll just take and erase that again it doesn't hurt the the um, the underpainting that that watercolor I'm just going to leave it. I keep messing, making it worse. It, but the erase because under the watercolor is underneath the the sanded stuff, which is an acrylic base. Now, when you're doing white, the one thing you want to do 
and you hear this in probably in various ways from different people but the way I do it and that's that's the only way I can teach is the way I do it is to take and use use an undercolor everything's got to be underpainted in the shadows you've got blues and purples so a lot of times I'm just going to come in and underpaint now this may not even get changed because this is this is in shadow here and so I'm just gonna this is just a, a kind of a light lavender color and then I've got this which is kind of a light blue gray and I'm just gonna base that in just just like that so it's not really white there it's it's um, kind of a purple and then a light blue gray then I'm just going to blend these two with my color shaper I don't want to drag any more of that black into this and it goes around goes around under the chin there and goes back up the other side so there's a little a little shape to it you know, follow the shapes and I'll do more of that when we when we um, get into finishing this up. Same thing down here. Um, now let's see. I can I can use my purple that I've got here because there is some purple. I see some purple in there. And these these feathers are coming around the body then I'm going to switch from this purple put a little bit more of it in there and then I've got this yeah, it's kind of an electric blue color and I'm going to finish off the the dark part of the shadow. This is white. Now this part of the bird is white but it it's shadow here so it's it's not white. If you start being aware of um, of things. Now this is this is just a lighter version of this and that I'm going to put here where I'm eventually going to put white. I did some some cranes that were mostly white birds and I had blue and purple and everybody look at it and they'd say uh, aren't those white and I go trust me on this so you really need to trust me because one of my cranes took first place and it's just because I had the underpainting. This becomes um, this becomes shadows. This becomes texture. So I'm just going to lightly blend this. All right. So now we have our entire bird sands its eyes uh, underpainted. I'm going to take a little break um, just double check this it's hard to um, to paint and and talk at the same time so I want to make sure that I've got everything to where I need it to be so I can show you how I'm going to start to finish this up so another little break all right I've focused in on the head because it's a little small and I want you to see what I'm going to be doing to finish this up now remember I've got my my reference fo photo here that I'm keeping close so that I can look at it. Actually I'm just going to set it right down down there. And I want to start on on the beak here. Now I've, as I said before sometimes when you're uh, working on black you don't want to use white unless it's a really bright highlight 
it's you want to use blue and get the the angle right so this is kind of flat across here this is the beak it's a little bit shiny but it's not it's not real shiny and then and then down a little bit there's a little bit of shine right here just checking in the eyes I want to take a gray a lighter gray like this gray and I just want to put it in there for now that's going to help those black eyes show up when I get to them. Sometimes you do things, you use that artistic license that you have to create something there. Uh, I'm picking up an even lighter blue and there's a little bit of that on this side. Let's see if that doesn't show up. Okay, so if that doesn't show up, then you have to go to something that's even lighter. Now I'm blowing and I probably shouldn't, but make sure my head's not in the way. There we go. That, that'll show up a little bit better. A little bit better along there. Along his nose, there is a really light Right here at the end, there's kind of this, not light enough. So when in doubt, this is my white. I'm just going to come in and put that white there. I'm going to blend everything. I'll have to use my color shaper. I also want to put in some, some darker colors. Because it is kind of a black bill or beak here don't lose all of that that gray undertone there it's a little bit of black under that take my color shaper and kind of blend that I'm going in the direction of the beak. It's all kind of coming down. If you look at the beak, you'll see that there's a lot of a lot of texture to it. Try to reshape the beak just a little bit better. Guess on a goose and ducks, their bills. I'm going to take that lighter, one of those lighter blues and just come in here right along the, the edge. That's not working. Blend the edges, just kind of soften them, blend them in. Now sometimes if you've like if I've, you've got a little bit outside the lines, just take your background color, whatever that's going to be. This is just white, and just come in and reshape with that color. Now before there was the internet, there was PBS. And there used to be a little lady on that I got interested in, in pastels. That she would say, you know, have some fun and get your fingers dirty. And that's kind of what it is with um, pastel. Okay, I don't want to work on that too much because this is for the goose. All right now I'm going to take 
find find my smaller black and I'm just gonna come in now when you're doing animal eyes be sure you're putting animal eyes on and not people eyes it's gonna come in and the, this side is kind of foreshortened a little bit and then here they're kind of round buggy eyes then I'm going to take my my white. Now I'm trying to, to get this finished up. Um, if, if I really were doing this as a uh, project, I on my own I would take a lot more time than I'm I'm taking right now. So you know, don't don't think you have to work as fast as I'm working. Right now, this is just white. I'm trying to see if I've got a soft white. Let's see how this works. Come up here. Yep, I need a softer white. Just come up here. And add the white. Getting it more pink, and I don't want it pink. That. I'm just wiping off the tip of my blending brush or my blending tool here and just going to lightly blend that down into that that purple add a little more of that that white <sighs> on the neck I've already got the, the blue there, but I'm going to come in and just kind of like suggest some ridges in his feathers where they may be a little bit more spread out. Come underneath here, get a little darker. This is in the shadow. Blend that a little bit. Touch these. Lightly blend. Shadow under his chin. Maybe right there across his nose. Back here. It goes down in between his his shoulders. Now I'm not going to show you every single stroke I do because we I want to get this done and not make it into a project. This is just a supposed to be a just a tips and tricks. Let me find that lighter blue. blending tool okay and you see how dirty my hands are so I can do something in the background that's why I kind of save the background until last so I'm going to take a little break I'm going to to uh, readjust and then I'll, hopefully we'll finish this up okay now I want to finish this up or at least give you all of the information you need to finish it up. I did do a little bit more work on on the neck because I, I need to get in close to to do all that. Uh, one of the things I want to tell you a lot of people panic when they've got something they don't like in pastel and they think they've got to start all over something. If you don't like it just well, it helps to have a clean finger but you can just come in and, and blend something out 
you know, just come in with some of the same same color. This is actually white, so I'm gonna because I need to throw some white in here on his chest. But don't don't worry about some of the small stuff because it's 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 just um, you know just easy to just come in and, and blend it out. Now what I've done in the in the interim is that I kind of went through with a, a lighter chalk and just put down where I might want to put some feathers. One of the things I like about this goose is that. You can see how the feathers follow the shape of the body. As they go over the rounded parts, they change direction. And a lot of birds, you can't really see that, that change of direction on there. And the, the geese are, are really a good example of what I'm trying to, to teach you here. But I'm, I'm just going to come in and, and just kind of put some of these in and these are just kind of little I'm just kind of wiggling my my hand here now that might be a little bit too dark see that's one of the things like I said you never had the right color see that's a little better but you want to follow the shape around they kind of stop and start they're more concentrated up here where they're coming over the bird And they're a little darker up here too. Pay attention to your your subject, whatever it is that you're painting. Pay attention to it. Look at it. Study it before you you get going on it. Okay, there's that. And then up in here, you'll notice that they have kind of an, a, a light outline. So I'm just going to use a, a light, a light color here, and just just suggest some of these feathers. Now you don't have to do them exactly as you see on the bird. At least you know you want to get the angles right. You want to get the shapes right. But, you know, each bird's going to have a little bit different pattern, so if it isn't exactly the same, don't, don't worry about it. Now what I'll do is after I show you what I'm going to do and finish, to finish this up, and you'll have all the information that you're going to need to finish up this bird, I'm going to come back in off camera and and finish this the way I want it to be finished. It's kind of hard talking and and painting so I, I want you to see what this looks like finished. See it come around here follow the the shape of that feather. Now there's a bunch of little feathers that kind of come out at a little bit different angle right from here. I, I've got I've got the bird in my hand other hand and I'm looking at that. Come in, maybe find a little bit different color here. These can get get blended in either with your finger or if it's a little bit easier to do, come in with the, the color shaper and lightly blend them. And you can use use the, the color on your sh color shaper to just kind of pull that 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 color around or create some some lighter lines with it 
because you do have some chalk on on the end of that back to this but just just take this and blend with it don't don't make straight lines remember these these go around the bird and they just kind of fade out across the chest here and then we have these you can blend these back a little bit blend the the colors together and that goes all the way back back to the end here you'll look you'll see some of these get a little bit darker color so I've got like a, a dark um, brown and I can come in and add that dark brown in the same the same way now these feathers right in here kind of they kind of come around the bird these are wing feathers so the wings are all kind of folded up so the feathers may go in a different direction so last but not least I might see some lighter ones back here too or at least some lighter colors that I can throw in now you don't have to be as detailed as I'm getting I can get carried away and sometimes that can be a good thing or a bad thing what can happen is that you can get um, a little bit over you can overwork something real quick so I want to come in here here we've got the the light area and I'm just gonna come in and just add some of that white I don't need to lose all of that that blue that I have as underpainting come in here with the white get that little hint of of light on there down in here where it's actual shadow you'll see feathers stick out that are catching a little bit of light so bring that down again you can come in with your color shaper and and kind of like blend some of those those edges there is a little bit of a a shadow now this is a really dark purple that I've got in my hand but there is a, a, a kind of a, a shadow right under here see the some of the feathers that might be sticking up again don't just make them straight curve them because this is a rounded bird so if the shadows hit they're going to follow the shape of that bird get down in here with some of this darker color under the tail so I'm just going to kind of blend back in need to go over some of the white again now I hope that you've learned something here my my biggest challenge is to get my students to look at something before they start painting to see where the where shadows are what the shapes that they're painting so if you can if you can learn to, to to look at this and see the different shapes see the different colors and and plan it out before you ever 
touch your surface, you're going to be way ahead of the game. So watch the, uh, the tail end of this and you'll see the finished product. Thank you so much. Um, be sure to check out the blog spot for the link to this and, and the reference material. And I hope that you stay safe, call your friends and family, and most of all, keep painting. And I hope to see you again in class real soon. Thank you for watching.